Now, teenage pregnancy is still a major challenge despite government's efforts to reduce its incidence. Data from the Ghana Health Service shows the year 2020 saw as many as 109,888 teenage pregnancies, which translates into 301 teenagers being impregnated every day. Now, let that sink in. Essentially, by this time of day last year, we would have been counting 301 teenagers getting pregnant. You can further break it down to 13 teenage pregnancies every hour. The situation is particularly serious in the central region, which saw 10,301 girls getting pregnant, with the youngest girls to be put in the family way, being as young as 10 years. There's a silver lining, though. As a victim of rape and teenage pregnancy herself, has been able to pull through the situation and established a foundation that's taking care of 400 teenage girls in the Ebra Sebu Kwamankesi district. Akosu has relied on farming to feed and sponsor these girls in school and also to put them into apprenticeship. We'll shortly be looking at addressing the teenage pregnancy phenomenon in a bit. But let's first get to understand the central region problem a lot more. Correspondent Richard Kujunyako has been engaging some teenage mothers in Ibru Asebu, Ibra Asebu, Kwamankese district, and has more in this report. I feel sad when I see my younger sisters being a teenage mother, I know what it is and what they are passing through. Ernestine Nakosiakwa was a victim of defilement and as a result got pregnant during her teenage years. Years after the incident, Ernestina has been able to put herself together to rally people that were in the same situation around she was years ago. Now Timprek Foundation have uh, 400 teenage mothers which uh, 34 are in secondary schools in the central region, 22 are in basic schools, and 344 are in schools training. She's mobilized 400 teenage mothers whose vulnerabilities are putting them back in situations that would make them pregnant again and shatter their dreams. <laughs> I wasn't doing well at school, and so I dropped out and decided to learn some apprenticeship. But hunger was killing me. Charlotte is a teenage mother in the Abra Sebu Kwamankase district. She tells a chilling tale of what put her in the situation she finds herself. <laughs> And then I got a guy who told me he would help me. I gave myself to him and he got me pregnant. But I decided to terminate the pregnancy. And that's when to buy a 70 Ghana CD drug to terminate it. I tried and tried, but I couldn't terminate the pregnancy. So I had no option than to give birth. And Tim Preg Foundation came to my aid. The struggle for survival. Her colleague, teenage mother, Jennifer, shares her ordeal and why she desperately needs some skills to become independent. We are many here, and so we need your support. We are many. Some are 12 years, up to 20 years. We all got pregnant, but we had no support. It isn't that we are bad girls. That is why we got pregnant. But what we would eat on a daily basis makes us give ourselves to men. Now we need your support as we have begun learning skills. Some have no parents, and their families don't even mind them. And so survival becomes our only option. And then men take advantage of us and get us pregnant. We need your help. Kwamankesi Omahen Okakabin Aidan Ando the Tent is calling for support for Team Preg Foundation as the foundation is gradually changing the narrative in the area. It's uh, what I can say is something that is uncontrollable. We of the Treasure Council have decided to give a land to any NGO who would like to help the traditional area to help us in a way of driven out such a thing.
Well, we're joined now by the Director of the Central Regional Department of Gender, Rich Love Amamu. Thank you very much, uh, Rich Love. Now, the numbers are staggering with the case of the Central Region being especially problematic. What could be accounting for the rather high numbers in the region? Hello, Rich, Rich Love, you'll have to unmute so we can hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Miss Rich Love Amamu, but I'm a traditional leader from the Volta region. So my school name is Mama Awuchu Ajagba II. All right. And yes, um, after the regional breakdown for 2020 adolescent pregnancy, Central Region happens to be third on the list with a total number of 10,301. Well, research, the research done so far shows that single parenting is very high in the region. And someone will ask, why single parenting? I said, okay, after our research, we've realized parents are not taking responsibilities. So those children have to provide for themselves. And when that happened, most children will be taking money from men. All right. And when a man gives you money, definitely the man will sleep with you. All right. So most of the children... Mm, now, Rich you Love, want to ask a yeah, Rich Love uh, you're talking about single parenting being a problem in the region. And, you're, and so, yes, yeah, so these single parents are ending up having children who are getting, who are becoming uh, pregnant at the, at the, in their teenage ages, which also means that these ones who are being pregnant at teenage, at the teenage ages are also going to end up being single parents. So the parents, it's a, it appears to be a generational thing. Where did it, at what point did it start? Where did it? You are asking where did it start? So I'm, I'm just saying that we seem to be having single parents giving birth to more single or children who are going to end up being single parents. So at what point does this generational thing start? So do you know something? Uh, beginning, when the children are growing up, the other thing in the central region is cohabitation. The children are young but will move in to live with their boyfriends. And when they do that, because their parents are not ready to take care of the children, they allow them to be with the boyfriends. And that is when they get pregnant. But after giving birth to one or two, because the guy is also not ready to take a wife, they move out of, the guy moves them out of the house, and then they come back to live with their parents sometimes. So that is one of the problems we have in the central region. Cohabitation, it's another problem. Now, some children get pregnant whilst living with their parents. And then the parents will say, since you are pregnant, then go and live with the man who did that to you. Then they will move to go and live with the man. Right. So with the adolescent pregnancy, it's very high here. And when... The child, the mother is an adolescent mother who will give birth to an adolescent child who can't, the mother can't inculcate any good moral values in the child. The child will grow up and become like the mother. Yes. So poverty becomes another problem in the family. All right. Now, Rachel, I want you to hold on a bit. Let's speak with, uh, let's talk about some solutions. We're joined by Antoinette de Rocha, who is with the Planned Parenthood Association of Ghana. Now, I, I want to also find out from you, apart from the reasons stated, would you happen to know why the central region is particularly plagued by this phenomenon? Uh, come again, please. No, I... I I'd, I'd, I'd actually want us to, uh, Antoinette, to address this, uh, Annette, to address this problem. I'm asking, Annette, apart from the reasons stated by Rich Love, would you happen to know why the Central Region is particularly plagued by this phenomenon? Okay, good evening to listeners. Um, I also say that um, when there is no parent-child communication, 
where parents get involved in the activities of young people and also get to know their needs and then how to support them. This can also contribute to this phenomenon as we are talking about here. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is this problem. You're from PPAG. I want to find out from you, would it help if the these girls get to know a bit more about sexual reproductive health and the use of contraceptives? Yes, um, I'll say that it is also key because it is going to help them to make informed choices and informed decisions about whatever they want to do. Because when an individual has the education on their sexual and reproductive health, we believe that they are able to make informed choices. And so, therefore, they will not um, have sex, unprotected sex, but rather have sex using protection, which would also curve the percentage or the high um, teenage pregnancy that we are talking about today. But how do you talk to a 10-year-old about using protection? Um, with 10 years old, I'm afraid you can't talk to the 10-year-old about protection. But they're getting, they're, they're getting pregnant. Abstinence. Yes, but you rather stress on abstinence. But it is good for you to just um, let the young person know that at this age, you are not supposed to have sex because you are young. And so you need to rather focus on your books and then grow up to become the responsible adults that you have to be. Let's, so take, the, the, let's, take, the, and let's take the case of the central region. And uh, we're listening, we're hearing some of the girls say that their case, it's a case of they being poor. They're not having anything. And so they tend to turn to some of these men to take monies from them. It's a poverty issue. How do you tell the person abstain when they feel that this is the way they can also earn a key? Yes, uh, we, we all know that when it comes to poverty, it means that there are a lot more one needs to do. Aside uh, the parents themselves, the individual cannot go to trade because they are young. And so they cannot go and um, trade or sell or do anything because it's even against the law. So as parents, it is our responsibility to take care of these young ones. But since they don't get the support from the parents, they tend to go into transactional sex, which leads them into this teenage pregnancy, which for me, I would say it's a no, and it it's, shouldn't be encouraged. We should rather engage parents to take up their responsibility once they bring up the children into this world. All right, I'll go to... Uh... Rich Love, right now. Rich Love, how do you propose we deal with this problem of a teenage pregnancy, not just in the central region, but across the country? Hello, Rich Love, you have to unmute. Rich Love, you have to unmute so we can hear you. All right. Can yes, you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay, thank you. You know, since I'm in the central region, there are other directors who will be speaking on issues of their regions. So let me just talk about the central, the central region. region. That's fine. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, well, what I want to say is uh, it's a, this issue about the high rate of teenage pregnancy. It's a great concern to the Department of Gender under the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, and also the Central Regional Coordinating Council. So we have established clubs uh, and groups. We have a club called COBNAC in tackling the issue or trying to control the whole issue. We have formed a club, established a club at about 20 communities in the central region. We call the club Community Parents Network Advocacy Group. All right. And then that group, what we do is, we sensitize parents on sexual and gender-based violence. We want to equip them with requisite information on sexual and gender-based violence, adolescent sexual and reproductive health, and parental responsibilities. That is what we are doing. And with the support from UNFPA Adolescent Girls Program, 
So UNSPA is supporting us. Then we also have another club. We said, who made the girl child pregnant? Or who made the adolescent girl pregnant? It's the men and boys. They are the perpetrators, about 80%. So we have a club for the men and boys that is called the EMBAC. That is Men and Boys Advocacy Club. And what we do, that is what we are doing. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So my issue is, what is it? So these clubs that you're talking about, the formation of the clubs, is there enough to end this generational cycle where uh, teenage or single mothers well, you know, give birth to... You, girls who end up being teenage mothers themselves uh, you you are asking if it is enough to end it yes are you asking where do you know something we are trying to control the situation it's a gradual process so we have to stand from uh, start from somewhere before getting there so what we are doing now is to put measures in place to control the situation. That is exactly what the department is doing. Because we also have clubs for the girls. That what we do is to empower the girls. You know, one of our core mandates for the, mini the ministry's core mandate is to empower women and girls. So that is what we are doing. And when the girls are empowered and can speak out, when they are going through sexual harassment, whatever they are going through, To help them to control the situation. So that is what the department is doing at the regional level in the central region. In fact, we are doing so much on radio as well. All right. All right. Now, we've also been joined by Dai Will. She is the principal program officer, Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. So the question I have for you is the same I've had for my two other uh, panelists which is what is it that we're doing to address this issue of teenage pregnancy, where we end up having teenage mothers giving birth to children who end up being adolescent mothers themselves? Please unmute, Daiwil. Yes. So good evening to our listeners and thank you very much for putting this issue into perspective. I think teenage pregnancy has been an issue that is plaguing all of us. And as a country, we are also working towards achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030. And critically to empower all women and girls by 2030. And so when you look at the current situation we have at hand, it is something that should be of concern to all of us. Because when you extrapolate to the next nine years, you realize that you may be having a million girls getting pregnant before 2030, and we may not be able to achieve that. Goal. So what are we doing? Yes. What can we do? The causes of teenage pregnancy is varied and it's um, multifaceted. And so for that reason, in 2017, there was a comprehensive uh, framework developed by the ministry to address issues of teenage pregnancy. And this strategic framework is supposed to be a four-year strategic framework. And it's a, it has four strategic objectives. The first one to empower the adolescent themselves. The second one is to empower community stakeholder, stakeholders to ensure that they are also playing their part. If you listen to all the causes, the, region, the reasons given for teenage pregnancy, you realize that we need diverse um, approaches all right. to handle it. And so as um, Rich Love said, we, we have a lot of intervention. At the adolescent level, we are doing a lot to empower the adolescent girls. One, we have started mentorship activities. Now, for the mentorship activities, one thing we have realized is that most adolescents are more comfortable talking to their peers 
when it comes to issues of sexual and reproductive health. And most of them are influenced wrongly or are given wrong information by their peers. So the mentorship activity is supposed to empower them to be able to give accurate and timely information to their friends who might end up um, pregnant. I will, now, what, from, I will, one of the yeah, issues yeah. that you see running through is the issue of poverty, that these girls say they don't have anything and so they tend to engage in transactional sex. I'm yet to hear what it is that is being done to address that particular challenge. Okay, so Israel, there are a lot of stakeholder intervention, not only by the Ministry of Gender, but we work together with CSOs, NGOs, and others. And one of the things we want to encourage is that parents take up their responsibility as provided in the Children's Act. But the parents because, will also say they are poor and not in a position to take care of their kids. You see, Israel, I have been in the central region for six years. And one of the things I'll say is that sometimes it's about prioritization. Prioritizing what is important, whether taking care of our children is what matters to us or getting from our children, that is what matters to us. I think that was the reason behind the COPNA and the, as oh. uh, Rachel Love spoke about, to oh. get the parents to understand their responsibilities, prioritize the needs of their children and be able to address it one. Now, we also work with other NGOs, CSOs and other organizations who are into skill training for these girls. But as we all know, we cannot reach out to all these girls. All right. And so we need the parents to also take up their part of their responsibility. Then together, we work to address this canker. All right, Daiwell, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to exhaust the conversation. But thank you very much for making time to speak with us. Uh, Daiwell Pe is the Principal Programs Officer at the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social protection and then we also had director of the central regional department of gender rich love amamu and antoinette director who is with the planned parenthood association of ghana thank you very much for making time to speak with us but